This is a really big challenge for a lot of couples when one person wants to hit the road and the other one wants to stay at home or they want to go to completely different places and so they hit the road separately. So if you are currently on the road separate from your partner or you're considering it, these are some of the reasons that we, we might be choosing to do this. There are some of the challenges, some of the rewards, and some great strategies that have helped other folks on the road grow stronger in their relationships. So I am here to say that you can do it. Let's all learn from each other what's helped and share our feelings too, because it, it can get lonely out there when we're separate from our partners. So if in the comments you wanna share any of the experiences you're having, any ideas, if you wanna reach out for some support, I think the comments would be a great way to do that. Uh, we're gonna take a look first at what the reality is. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Let's, take, let's just dive right in to some of the challenges. When the announcement is made, I am leaving, I am going on the road, I am called to the road, I must venture out, I must live on, on wheels, or I need a personal retreat, I need a change of pace, that means I need to leave, I need to be by myself for a little bit of time, but I'm not leaving you, right? Okay, those kinds of conversations from the get-go. Or, hey, I'm just really, really burning out here on taking care of people, uh, whether it's the kids or being as a caregiver to a fa another family member, and I need a week off, or I need a month off, or I need three months off, or whatever it is, that initial conversation can be a little scary. Or, honey, the job needs me to travel, and I'm gonna need to be on the road for a month, right? Or two months, or something like that. That can also be a bit of a scary communication. The feelings that we experience, there's loneliness, there might even be resentment or jealousy, uh, you know, uh, one of us, the, the person leaving or the person staying behind might feel like, you know, we're missing out on something that the other person is experiencing. How can we help each other through that? We're going to talk about that a little bit. There are also the challenges, the financial challenges, you know, how do we negotiate who's going to pay for what? Who's going to pay for all that mileage that's being put on the car, all the repairs that are being put on the van? Uh, Who's gonna pay for the house while someone's not in it? Is the person traveling going to pay for the house while they're not in it? A lot, or the utilities, lots of questions like that to negotiate. The uh, challenges can also be logistical. So if uh, someone is being left behind to take care of the entire house, and certainly in my case, I leave Vermont, so that means leaving snow shoveling, leaving dealing with ice, leaving dealing with frozen pipes, and that sort of thing, to my partner. And so we have to figure out what feels fair around that. Uh, there are some strategies for that as well. There's also the challenge of, hey, we're gonna have separate experiences, right? So whenever you have separate experiences, you might grow separately, you might develop in different ways, and then when you come back together, are you still really together? So there are some important strategies that can help to keep your, your bond growing even while having these separate adventures. How can we grow love on the road? Let's dive right in and talk about some of the, the strategies. The strategies are, uh, there are 10 strategies I wanted to talk about. These are strategies that other van lifers, other snowbirders, people who travel for work, people in the military, uh, use to help keep their bond strong, even in some cases growing stronger. All right, so the strategies are, da, 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 da. number one, caring, compassionate communication. Caring, compassionate communication. So what does that mean? All right, that might mean right from the get-go, sharing the facts and listening to feelings and the feelings can change. So our partner might have an initial response, which is you know, some resistance of some kind, and that might shift over time if we remain compassionate and understanding and validate that yes, this is, this is a shock to the system and uh, they need time to adjust. So caring, compassionate communication is often patient and forgiving and all those things that we know we want to get uh, receive when we're being given some hard news. All right, caring, compassionate communication is important, but it's also, as we know, important every step of the way. So even while on the road, 
we can all start missing each other more, even when the initial excitement wears off and we just start missing each other more. And so we can hear in our partner's voice maybe that they're having a hard time or maybe we're having a hard time. And just to be, you know, listen, just be mindful of that. Uh, I think we all know this and I just am here to say that that's, um, I want to validate that we all go through those feelings and we all need the caring, compassionate communication and response. And, you know, you have every right to ask for that in return. And so number two, extra help at home. All right. If I were being left at home to tend to everything while my partner was away, I would want some extra help. And as the person leaving, I want to know that I'm leaving my partner in good shape. So if one idea is to line up extra help, that could be, hey, lining up a house cleaner ahead of time to go in once a month and take care of things, or someone to shovel the snow, or someone to walk the dog, or to house it while our partner is, needs to go away for a while. Um, so lots of ways that we can line up extra help so that our partner or we aren't left just taking care of everything when it used to be shared. Also, uh, letting go of some of our standards. So if we would have done it a certain way, but now we're not there to do it and our partner handles things differently, uh, one suggestion would be to just let that be the case. Um, and so that is tip number two. Strategy number three is visits. All right, this is a fun strategy. Fly our partner out wherever we are for a visit, or maybe they fly us back home for a visit. Uh, find ways to get together, even while apart, and that might be physical, and so that can help take the edge off too. Couples counseling during the trip. All right, who's thought of this? This can be maintenance. Couples counseling can be maintenance. It doesn't have to be crisis. Couples counseling can just be a safe space for us to talk with our partner and to, for them to talk with us about some things that we might not have wanted to talk about or maybe even thought to talk about when left to our own devices. So couples counseling can just be a very safe space. It can be done by Zoom or you know other uh, video conferencing and it can be really good for preventing hard feelings from festering. I'm a big believer in couples counseling as maintenance. Scheduled communication. All right, predictability is so helpful for putting people at ease. We tend to feel safe when we know what's going to happen. Uh, if we know that our partner is going to be answering the phone when we call at 10 a.m. every Sunday, or they're going to call us at 10 a.m. every Sunday, <sighs> we don't have to be wondering, are they going to call? Are they not going to call? You know, what's going to happen with our relationship? When, when are we going to be talking next? We just know it's going to happen. And that is really good for a marriage to have some predictability where we can count on each other. Also, uh, regular check-ins are different from the fun stuff like video dates. Okay, fun stuff. Video dates. Ideas for video dates. Great opportunity to make comments here, right? Fun, fun ideas. Okay, there's cooking together. One person can be cooking in the vehicle or outside the vehicle at the campsite, and the other person can be at home cooking as well, and you can be cooking together. Maybe different meals, maybe the same meal, maybe try a new recipe together, and then eat it together too. Watch a movie together. There's the watch party on Netflix. So you can sign up for that and watch the same movie at the same time and be making uh, comments to one another and that kind of thing. Sharing a sunset. Okay, so sharing a sunset. Uh, some folks on the road feel connected with their partner. And it's so romantic. I just think this is so romantic. When we look up in the sky, we're seeing the same moon and the same sun. The stars are in different locations, depending on where you are, but it's the same stars, the same sun, and the same moon. How amazing is that? We can be thousands of miles away, and we can still be looking up at the same sky. So 
have a stargazing date, have a moon gazing date, have a sun gazing date. If you know you're going to be going somewhere really cool, share that with your partner. Make it a video date. If you're going to, like I just got back from a wildlife reserve, I would have loved to have shared that with my husband and we could have been video chatting while I was going to the wildlife reserve or going at, to the beach. That'd be really cool. Or maybe he's going to be going somewhere really cool. All right, care packages. So care packages. Yes, we can receive care packages on the road and we can certainly send them from the road via online shopping. Care packages are really fun. They can be romantic, they can be a little sexy, they can be silly, they can be practical, but they show caring. So care packages, uh, send them, we can send them to our partners and they can send them to us. There are lots of Amazon drop-off locations and you can find that on the Amazon website. Then there's also pre-written love notes. Who has done this? I think this is so cool. Pre-written love notes. Pre-written love notes are handwritten they're in an envelope. They're dated with the date to be opened. Now, you can leave these for your partner and they can leave these for you. You can also hide love notes so that over time, these love notes are opened and it's a little treat. All right, we're, get, we're, we're, we're getting warmed up here for sexting. Yes, I said it. I said sexting, which is texting or... Um, videos even that are sexy for our partner and we can do it back and forth or where they can just be one way it doesn't have to stop just because we're not physically together we can still have that part of our relationship alive and well we can also send sexy pictures of ourselves to our partner is there something that you or your partner love to watch each other do or hear each other do like like singing or dancing or cooking right is there something that you just love about your partner well you can re you can ask them to record themselves doing it and you can record yourself doing what they love to see or hear you do as well but this is something that we can all get better at I love the comment section because that's where we all learn from each other so please feel free leave your comments and let me know, let everybody in the comment thread know what your ideas are, what you think of these ideas, if you tried them, have they helped? Challenges, let's share some of the challenges too. We should not be going through this alone. Uh, we can, it takes a village and we all benefit from each other's suggestions and kind ears. I'm a big believer that we can grow love on the road. So let's do it, let's get out there, let's grow love on the road for ourselves, for one another, and certainly with our partner. You can do it. Enjoy your journey.